No Man's Sky is boring, repetitive, and uninteresting. Or, at least it was on launch. I gotta hand it to Sean Murray and Hello Games. They bit off more than they can chew and paid the price for it. But instead of taking that L lying down, they saddled back up and rode on through, working hard to deliver on the promises they made while also restoring their reputation. It's a heartwarming underdog comeback story of the times, and the result is a game today that's hardly recognizable to the game it once was. That's right, four years later, the No Man's Sky we know today is... still boring and repetitive. But hey, at least it makes for some good screenshots. I missed the hype train for No Man's Sky the first time around, thankfully, but I was aware of its reputation for being absolutely disappointing. I did eventually completely forget its existence, until one day it popped into my Steam recommendations where to my surprise it had mostly positive reviews. I was still leery of the game, but the internet historian's excellent video essay about No Man's Sky convinced me to at least give it a chance. And I did. And roughly 70 hours later, I've had my fill of it, and I'm probably not going to go back to it. Unless they add something crazy, like robot waifus. Okay, that'll do. Oh gee, this is so scurry. Wait, what's that? <laughs> now don't misunderstand me. I enjoyed the time I spent playing No Man's Sky, but I don't feel the want to play it any further. But before I explain why, I want to go over the good things No Man's Sky does. The initial concept of No Man's Sky is very appealing. It sets itself up with this grand scope of a massive universe with millions of solar systems, all teeming with unique landscapes and plants and atmospheres and animals and materials. You can set up your base anywhere, you can manually fly through space, drive around in a little dune buggy, farm plants, command a fleet of alien starships, fight space pirates, explore the furthest reaches of the galaxy, purchase and own a wide variety of different starships to suit your needs, partake in quests either solo or with other players, or you can shoulder check a weird tiger thing to death. But all these things the game allows you to do are small potatoes compared to how the game makes you feel. Now bear with me for just a moment as I try to illustrate my experience. One of the first missions I did for the Space Anomaly took me to a distinct solar system I hadn't had the means to reach otherwise. The first thing I noticed about this system was its space station. Most solar systems have a space station owned by an alien race, usually filled with traders, travelers, and shopkeepers alike. But this station was completely abandoned, seemingly long ago. After completing said mission, I returned to the system to explore a nearby planet, which I named Omeletas, because the area I built my base on was vaguely egg-shaped, and omelets are made out of eggs. Compared to other planets I visited, this one was completely barren, with a landscape not too dissimilar to our own moon. No plants, no animals, no sentinels, virtually no presence of any sort. The only thing I could hear was the howling of the solar winds. Wait, is that grass? The only point of interest on this whole planet was a single crash site, with some random debris and an active distress beacon. I didn't find any sign of a crashed starship, so I can only hope the survivor made it off this no man's land. I began to think about what I would do in this situation. Stranded on a barren planet, in an abandoned solar system, light years away from any sort of intelligent life. I quickly realized how small I was in this seemingly infinite universe, and it was at that moment that I felt completely isolated and alone. Surrounding this planet was a pair of moons, which in contrast to Amaletta's barren desolation, were teeming with life. The first moon I explored was Rorsifor, flourishing with prairies of yellow grass, forests of trees with purple leaves, and packs of these cute little blobby things frolicking under the pinkish sky. Sometimes the weather got a little too hot, but otherwise a very pleasant moon. The next moon, Toxedo, was a much harsher environment. Purple moss-like grass blanketed a landscape dotted with towering mushrooms and colossal ring-like formations. Some of the fauna are incredibly hostile, but there's still a nice variety of interesting critters, like these cute little spring crabs, which are apparently evil. Huh. Both of these moons are similar, but different. 
Both are alien, but alien in distinct ways. I imagine a scenario where a species from each moon evolves and grows into a foundation for a future civilization, both so close yet so far from each other. How long would it take for them to discover the other? Do they even suspect? Would they even like each other? See a kinship in that other species for sharing the same sun? Or would they be rivals, intent on destroying the other because of their differences? This is where No Man's Sky shines the brightest, in emulating the realistic isolation of space and its grand scale, but with enough fantasy to capture the imagination. It's existential, it's serene, it's beautiful, and it's fantastical. But these are all subjective elements that most people don't give two shakes of a spring crab's tail about, and it's the actual gameplay that we're here for. Unfortunately, the gameplay in this video game gets repetitive, boring, and grindy really quickly. First thing to note, procedural generation does not mean infinite possibilities, or at least in the way that it matters. You know what procedural generation does? It determines how lumpy your new planet is, what random pseudo-scientific name the next rock has. It only changes things on the very surface level, while they're all still functionally identical. And their function is often very minor as well. All of these unique things you encounter don't serve a purpose beyond the materials that pop out of them when you shoot them with your laser. Sure, maybe you find a funky looking plant, but you know what you do with that plant? You scan it, rename it a funny name, take a screenshot of it to post on Reddit, harvest it for materials, and you forget its existence. That's all the impact it has. It doesn't help that nothing is completely unique either. I found this one weird planet with creatures that look like giant living dog toys, and I was so excited because I thought I found something never before seen. Then I looked on a wiki and someone already found it, but with another name. It's not even a different color. All of the planets soon start blurring together, and you start caring less and less about all the unique intricacies of the wildlife and more and more about trying to find that one planet from four star systems before that had uranium so you can finish a procedurally generated quest. Speaking of the procedurally generated quests, take a wild guess. It's always collect X number of this, or kill X amount of these, or deliver X to here. Sure, they have different flavor texts and you get different rewards, but to what end? You're just grinding and flying and collecting and selling to get more units so you can buy more equipment so you can grind and collect and sell even more. Then what? Build a giant base? Yeah, sure, you can do that. My point is, the procedural generation provides no real substance on its own, and it leads to players coming up with their own goals, their own projects, their own missions to keep them playing, and unfortunately that's something that's hard baked into the game's foundation, and no amount of new features is going to change that. I'd rather have a single region filled with interesting locations and creatures and secrets and treasures and characters and stories than a whole universe of bland nothing. I'm in the world's biggest sandbox, but all I have is a shovel with no pail. You follow? Of course, you can make that same argument about Minecraft and its procedural generation. The difference between them, however, is even though Minecraft technically has less variety, what is there serves more of a purpose. A Minecraft cow has many purposes. It drops essential resources early in the game in meat and leather, but it also gives milk and has the ability to breed more cows. When you find a cow and you're not in complete danger to starving, you corral that cow. You milk that cow. You plan a farm using that cow. Sure, there are theoretically an infinite amount of Minecraft cows, but that single cow and how you use it makes it special to you. It becomes a companion. It's important. What happens when you find quadruped number 2387? Bottom line is, No Man's Sky is a beautiful, thought-provoking, easy-going game. It's something you can play to unwind after a long day, put on a podcast and do some low-risk flying around a massive galaxy. I definitely see the appeal, but for all its luster, it just doesn't have enough meat for me to sink my teeth into. Who knows how much the game will change in another four years, maybe I'll change my mind, but in the meantime, I'm gonna keep my feet on solid ground. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.